hello there. Thank you for checking out this episode of Raised on the Radio. I am one half of the show, Colt Brocado, Patrick Blair in Zoom land as usual. How are you this morning? Good. It looks sunny where you are, and it looks like I'm in a room that a vampire would be in, as always. Okay. See, to me, it looks opposite of that. It looks sunny, but there's actually no windows in this room. That's just from the light. Yeah. Well... I look pale as usual. You know what? Someone yesterday. You, you, you kind of do blend in with your wall. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it's fucked up. Someone yesterday <laughs> said to my wife, they saw a picture of my, my son. They said, man, his dad must be pale or something like that. And I was like, hey, tell that person to get fucked. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're white. We're pale. So what? It'll be all right. We're European. What do you want us to do? There's no sun. <laughs> we left Africa and we stopped there where it was cold and cloudy. We didn't get any sun. What he's do you want us really, to do? He's not really that pale though, right? Uh, he has my, yeah, he's going to be pale. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Poor kid. yeah. He didn't, he didn't get his mom's skin at all. <laughs> so what can you do? What can you do anyway? There's anything you can do. No, well, no, I mean, you can go tan, but that's terrible for you. Yeah. Well, people always ask me too, like when people ask about a ring up tanning and I'll say something like never tanned a day in my life, like on purpose, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. They'll go, really? And I go, why would I want to do that? Well, because you don't want to be pale. And I go, yeah, I do. That's my natural skin tone. <laughs> I don't want to alter my skin tone. I also don't want plastic surgery or, I mean, I do have, I have totally altered my skin, but anyway. Uh, yeah, I don't have you ever been tanning? You're a you're into bodybuilding. I know they do that shit regularly, right? On the on the reg. Uh, not really. I don't. I, uh, I, as far well, as not really. You don't tan, or not really. Bodybuilders don't. No, tan. bodybuilders don't really tan. The, the anymore. Tan, huh? Didn't they use? Isn't that isn't that a thing in the bodybuilding world? Uh, I mean, I think you're talking about like the spray on tan that they use whenever they get on stage. Oh, so those fuckers don't put in the work and actually get tanned. I mean, I mean, some of them might, but I know that like the big thing is once before you get on stage because of the lighting, they put on a spray on tan and it kind of makes things pop more. So the judges can see muscle groups better and things like that. Hmm. I regret asking anything about it. it you know, let me ask you something. So I'm going to, I, I I've thought about this and I thought about you and a couple other people when I, when I was thinking about this, cause you're, you're into lifting and, and working out and shit. So I, I consider my, okay. 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 You, tell me if you know who I'm talking about, you know, the people on social media that, and I, I, I don't want to get too specific about what I'm talking about because I feel like if I do person or person's, I think might listen to the show. I might know I'm talking about them. So let me, let me figure out a way to tread lightly. So you know how people will post their workouts on social media. They'll post like their stats and all this stuff. Right. You mean like what they benched or what they squat or whatever? I mean, is that what you mean? Yeah. But more so like I'm at this percentage body fat. And I'm, uh, okay. Okay. I was on this journey and I started this and it, okay. So and a lot, most people that I see on social media that do this typically cite like some form of inspiration, like some other person or some book they read or some video they watched or something like that. You know what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was thinking about myself and I'm like, really, when it comes to physical fitness, I've never been inspired by anyone other than my own self-hatred. <laughs> For real. Just my overall fear of being a fat tub of shit. That's, that's the only thing that ever drives me. Okay. Uh, it's just complete self-loathing. Are you like that at all? Or is it simply, I, I talked to this person and they said I should do this and it worked. So now I'm going to do it. And like, you know what I mean? I mean, I've been motivated by people, not necessarily. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't say, I don't know. I'm trying to think of like, if there's any time where I've seen somebody post something on social media and that was like, oh yeah, I need to go lift now. Like, I don't think I've been motivated that way. And I wouldn't say there's like self-hatred. No, I don't mean people uh, posting on social media. I mean, there's been like a professional. Okay. And I did use air quotes there. There's been a professional motivational 
fitness person who has, like I said, written a book or okay. perhaps they posted their routine or some sort of something on social media, but not, not your next door neighbor, like someone who, who people go to for advice, who like, again, would be considered a guru, a guru when it comes to this shit. I've never been inspired by one of those people to, when it comes to like athletics or not even athletics, just physical fitness, just like get in, get in shape, be healthy. It's always been like, uh, look at a bad picture of yourself or stare in the mirror at yourself until you go, you're a piece of shit, go do something about it. Uh, that's, that's the way that I operate. And I realized okay. when I was thinking about this, I think I'm, I, I think I'm in the minority here because if you pay attention to our surroundings, there are a lot of insanely unhealthy, obese, very, just very disgusting so. people. Uh-huh. Can I tell you why I thought about this? Okay. I'll, I I'll be like, honest. I now. would like to I'll, know. <laughs> I'll be honest now. I mean, it is it, this, this, this thinking was motivated by people posting on social media. Okay. But we went to the zoo the other day, mm -hmm. dude, I swear, man, like if there's one place you can go for there, just for you to just see people who forget giving up, I don't even think they know they exist. They're just physical matter around other pieces of physical matter. You know what I mean? Like they just don't, it's, it's bizarre. And again, I don't want to, well, I don't want these people, they don't know me and they don't know that I'm talking about them, but yeah, I just like, I don't get it. I, I, I but that's where the self-loathing comes in. Like I hate myself enough to go, you're a fat pile of shit. <laughs> don't eat pizza again today. It's your second time. Like that's, that's the mentality that I have. And I, and I'm like that with everything. Like I, I hate myself. But I think yeah. that, but I think that comes from like judging other people though, too. It's not just necessarily, you just don't want to get fat, but it's also like you see other people well, that, you of course. Want, that you don't want to be like, Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There, there was a family. Okay. There, there was a family, all three of which were in motorized carts, all three of which were insanely overweight, all three drinking what I'm, what I can only imagine was a regular soda out of a giant cup. And I'll do. Yeah, 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 for sure. Or Dr. Pepper, uh -huh. um, wild cherry Pepsi, maybe something like that. But so, <laughs> um, and all three were eating some form of dessert, which followed French fries and some like chicken strips or now don't get me wrong. I'll fucking destroy some chicken strips right now. I'll destroy some French fries. You know what I'm saying? I like all this stuff. I'm not dumb. Like I, I'm, 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 I know that these things are delicious, but the three of them all just like. And I just remember looking over and, I, and I'm sitting there with my wife and my son and we're changing him and we're giving him oatmeal at the zoo, his own oatmeal, because it's time to eat, you know, and I just, I just go, God, like where there was no guidance for those three, right. In life, when it came to, they don't obviously don't hate themselves enough to go, fuck, I'm a tub of shit. There was no guidance. So I'm sitting there and I look down at my son and I just go, bro. I got you. Like, I'm never like, and then my wife, are you going to fat shame him? And I'm like, if I have to, <laughs> if I have to, but I just, it, it's, it's bizarre. And so like this conversation was happening about something else about me where my wife was like, you're the most self-loathing person I know. And I go, but aren't, don't you like that about me? Because if I wasn't self-loathing, I'd probably be overweight. I probably wouldn't care what I looked like ever. And I, again, that sounds like very vain and, but dude, everyone cares. Even those three silly gooses on the motorized carts, there is some part of their day where they stop and think about their, uh, just the way that they're perceived by the rest of the world, I guess. There, it, it crosses their mind. They yeah, may not talk has, about it, right? Right. It may not yeah. be for more than a split second, right? but it happens. And I go, well, what would you rather me do? Would you rather me not care? You know, like this is the person that you married. So you got to deal with it. It's never going to change. Like, but I'm like that about everything, dude. I'm, I'm I, you know, I well, hate. But, but, but what you said was important. Like they, they, 
they couldn't have had guidance like growing up or anything like that. And I tell you what, you know, even a, uh, like I've got friends who have kids who play, uh, who play basketball and stuff like young kids. And I see some of the kids they play with and I'm like, dude, that kid should not be that big no, for, yeah, yeah. for that age. And it, but that kid doesn't have any guidance. It's just like, Oh, I don't want to cook tonight. Here's a burger. Here's chicken nuggets. Here's this, here's that, you know, it's McDonald's drive through probably five days a week. And, you know, and it's just, they don't, they don't have guidance, which sucks because that's how they're going to live their life. Unless, see, they, unless they grow up to hate themselves like Patrick Blair. Yeah, you got to. I'm telling you, it's the healthiest <laughs> thing you can do. I'm telling you. The healthiest thing you can do is hate yourself. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and then you do drugs and you drink to counterbalance all of the hate you have for yourself. It just kind of evens it, you know, but um, uh-huh. it's, it's, for, it's sure. for sure. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> mentally healthy. Uh, what was I going to say? But yeah, but see, like, even the cooking though, like if they did cook, it's likely going to be the same bullshit. It's going to be like a a banquet chicken pot pie or like, you know what I mean? It's going to, yeah. And you don't, you need someone to tell you about those things. I didn't learn, dude, I didn't learn about some of the shit I was eating until I became like a young adult. Uh, you know, but I was also, uh, you know, didn't have money and I was just feeding myself whatever I could to, you know what I mean? Yeah. So there was well, a lot of ramen. There was a lot of fucking grilled cheese sandwiches. There was a lot of fucking, you know, uh, cheap spaghetti. Cause it's easy. It's quick. And you know, if there was meat, it was, it was cheap shit. You can get frozen at the store. You know what I mean? Right. And I didn't learn about all this shit until I was a young adult. And I was just like, Oh my God, I cannot believe I've been putting this in my body for so long and I wasn't overweight. It, it, I've never been overweight, but I, I wasn't like, you know, uh, like cereals and shit you eat for breakfast. Like, Oh my God, what was I doing? Like just all of that stuff. And I think like people still like there are adults, millions and millions of adults who still, okay, I cook at home and I feed my kids a home meal, home cooked meal, but it's still bullshit, you know? Right. Like there's just no, I, it, it, anyway, we didn't have to go down this, this sort of a rabbit hole, but I was just, it, I was just thinking about it and I, and I am self admittedly, a, uh, hate myself. So it's, try it sometime. <laughs> Sometimes people it'll work for you anyway. But no, I like, like that about everything though, dude. Like I, I, you know, you ask me about music related shit all the time. If it has anything to do with me, I'm like, we talk about something else. I, I don't want to be in the room if it's on. Like someone will be like, "Oh, you got a new song? Want to play it?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'll play it," but I'm leaving the room. And a lot of people don't understand well, why. And I go, "Well, first of all, here's the thing. I spent time on that. And keep in mind, not only did I spend time on it, but a million times before it was, from the moment it was started and it was finished, I told myself, "You're a fucking piece of shit. I hate you. You suck at this." I said that to myself over and over. So if I play this and I'm in the room with you and you start talking or you start bantering or you just don't pay attention, I'm going to be really offended. So I'm just going to leave the room. You listen to it if you want. I'm not going to do it with you, right? That's that self-loathing that I'm talking about. Uh, but I'm like that about everything. I, it's But it amazes me that, you, that that's the situation, but you can get out on a stage in front of thousands of people and perform it but you can't be in the room when one oh no person is watching a video that's, or terif- that's terrifying that's terrifying so yeah. i guess that's the whole scenario of i'd rather be in front of thousands of people than one person when it comes to music well, look man if i love myself and we know plenty of people that do they'll go hey have you heard my new song and they'll just play it without even asking if you want to hear it there's okay. tons of those people. There, yeah, I'm, not, I'm just not that person. I get it. I don't love myself enough. I don't. <laughs> but I hate myself enough to try to do a good job. You know. You don't get it. I, I'm under. I'm trying to understand. <laughs> it doesn't. I really, we can stop I talking really. about it. <laughs> we can stop talking about it. Anyway, um, <laughs> I realize it's a pain in the ass too. My, I feel bad for my wife because she gets to, she gets to see all the, all the, uh, 
does she does she try to counteract it though like is she one of those people where like if she can see that you're i wouldn't say down on yourself but like if she sees that you're like in a self-loathing mood or something is she the type of person that's like trying to bring you out of it or she just lets you sit there because she knows there's not much she can do about it uh i think for the first few years of our relationship sure but she's yeah she doesn't anymore i mean she'll now she's kind of like sarcastic about it and like you i don't even i don't even remember the last thing she said but it was something like maybe you need to get a new therapist or something like that like you just something like that um yeah so no i mean she doesn't really she's not like but i also she knows i don't like compliments and i don't like sell like reassurance like i don't want it i don't want positive reinforcement yeah i don't want it i, I don't want it i don't need it I'm weird. I'm um, weird when it comes to that kind of stuff too. Like, but it, it, but it's. I guess I don't. I don't take it like compliments very well. Like it, like it, it kind of feels good to get a compliment, like on doing something or whatever. But then again, I'm like, I don't know what to do with that. Like, should I just smile or should I nod my head, or like I, I don't know how to embrace a compliment very well. Yeah, I mean, for, from people I like, I'm close to. I love, well, here's the thing. I'd rather give a compliment than get a compliment, you right. know? Uh -huh. um, and I appreciate, I appreciate in, in, like internally when someone, it, when, when like I give a compliment and I can tell that the person really appreciates, like they, it kind of made their day, not made their day, but kind of made them feel good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, which kind of makes you genuinely a good person that you get well, a better feeling off of making somebody else feel good than. Well, but I, I don't want to sound like I'm just saying that for the podcast either. I was trying to think of like a recent example, but like, yeah, I don't know. Just getting compliments. Like if it's someone I'm close to, that's fine. Like I'm not as weird about it, but if it's a stranger, the first thing that goes to my head is like, all right, what's the angle? Was that sincere? It's funny though, because we, we talk about this, like as band dudes all the time, like other band dudes don't watch you play. Yeah. And like, if you get off stage and another band dude comes up and says something about your set, you know, they're full of shit, you know it. <laughs> and there's always a common one that they use. They'll go really, 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 uh, really tight set. Good job, man. Really tight set. Really tight set. You didn't watch a single fucking minute. That's when you're like, what was your favorite part? Yeah. I, I don't give. Okay. <laughs> thank you. That's why I just keep walking. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, really tight set and then it'll be like other ones like really like nerdier ones like oh the tone was really cool I'm like whoa i would never i would never in my life say that thanks <laughs> thanks um yeah anyway um i was trying to think of a re oh 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 i don't know if this person well fuck it someone we've had on the show recently released something and i had to i won't anyway if you're listening, you know I'm going to talk about you, but so I won't use your name. Anyway, this isn't a bad story, but like, so like, uh, you know, someone we've had on the show recently released something and I reached out to that person and said, hey, send me a copy of what you're posting on social media. I want to post it. And they were genuinely like, holy shit, thanks. You know, and I was like, of course. Um, so the idea that they were like, oh God, I can't believe you're doing that. Thank you so much. I, that Again, the little things like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Of course, I want to post that. Um, but but it's but that's the cool thing though, because it's like you have a friend that's reaching out to you that wants what you're doing, so they can share it for you. Versus, how gross is it if that person were to have reached out to you, trying to give it to you and trying to get you to promote it? Happens all the time. But is that gross? Uh, it's a little bit gross. Yeah, it's a little bit gross. Uh, if it's someone who's not close to you, no. You know, yeah. I think there, there are, there are people who, if they did that, I would go, sure. You know, and it would make sense because we're, 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 we're bros, we're homies. Right. Um, but yeah, no, if it's, if it's just an acquaintance or yeah, if, that's a little bit weird to me. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I dude, I, yeah, I can't, I That's the other thing too about social media. You and I were discussing TikTok the other day mm -hmm. and if we should start one for this show. And I'm not on TikTok. I don't even really know. 
how the app works. I'm sure it's pretty easy to figure out, but my wife sends me TikTok videos all the time. And I just remember thinking, well, a lot of this is just people who like themselves too much. Fair. But that's what social media is, I guess. In, in essence, that's what it all is. But um, I just don't know if I, I've never, I mean, I'm already, it's probably way too late, but I don't know if I, I've ever been, if I've ever been to a point in my life where I love myself so much that I would just talk about myself in a public forum, you know, like social media. And someone we know did it just the other day. And I did not text you because I figured you didn't want my negativity at that moment in the day for some reason, but I was just like, Jesus Christ, pumped the brakes a little bit. Like it was just so, but you see it all the time. And again, it doesn't have to be anyone you and I mutually know, but you see it all the time with people. Again, that's what social media is. It's very voyeuristic. It's look at me. Um, it's sensationalism. It's out. It's, you know, being outrageous. I get it. We're doing that with the show. We've, you know, again, we're, we want attention. Otherwise we wouldn't be doing this podcast or at right. least maybe a video version of it. I don't know. I guess maybe audio is still seeking attention, but anyway, but you would never, but you never do this. If it was just you. When I look into, Ooh, that's, you just made me realize what it was. Okay. Uh, would I just do like a single me and a camera talking to a uh, camera? Yeah. What am I talking about? Am I talking about like MMA or music? Not my music, musical experiences, but am I just like praising well, I, someone else? I, mean, I could I mean, do that. You could? Yeah. I mean, I could get in front of a camera I, I, and I be could, like. I, I could see you doing that. I could see you get in front of a camera and, and doing the show basically like what we do, but on your own, but then like not wanting people to watch it. <laughs> because it Oh, yeah. No, please don't. No, absolutely. <laughs> That's a nightmare. Don't watch it. Um. <laughs> No, I mean, I could, I could get on, you know, I could do, you know, like uh, just spend 10 minutes talking about how Cowboy Cerrone is a badass and go over some of my favorite fights of his and compliment him in every way. And then I could talk about Beartooth, which right now is my favorite band on earth. They're, they're like, sorry to all my other favorite bands, but you're not close to them right now. To did me right now, there's nothing they can do wrong. Did you listen to the, the last track? That yes, just came it's from? fucking great. That band is but that band, see, that band appeals to me personally. Like, they've got it. They've got the sound that I love, have always loved, and will always love. I'll be an old fucking man in a nursing home listening to shit like that because that's not shit. But um, they, they, they find a way to be aggressive and heavy and hard rock, all still while being insanely melodic and catchy. And that's, that's what I love. And hooks when it comes to rock music, music. Uh, I love catchy in general, but um, yeah, dude. It, well, I they they didn't come on my radar until Disease. Isn't that the name of the album? Disease. Yeah, and it is a and, front to back a perfect record. Like, and I hate saying that because it's all subjective. It's whatever. But in my opinion, it is a front to back perfect record. There's not a bad song. Every song is great. Um, every song is catchy. Yeah. The, if only that band had come out, I don't know. I mean, they've been around a long time. Don't get me wrong. But if only they were like releasing this kind of music in like the early to mid 2000s. That probably would have, would have, that have changed how you did things? Uh, it would have inspired me to do something different than I was doing at the time. I think, I think really? I can say that now because it's after the fact, but, right. um, but anyway, yeah, they're just so fucking good. So I could sit here for forever and sit here and just praise them and talk and, you know, listen to the songs and just headbang in front of the camera. I don't give a fuck, but, but <laughs> well, yeah, don't reason, watch it. Well, the reason why I said that was because, so they came on my radar with disease and right after that, they came and played pops. And I was, I, I actually, it, man. I couldn't go. Yeah, I know. I actually met, I, I did. Well, so I see it was weird because I seen that they were coming to pops, but I didn't see the date. I just seen that they were coming to pop. So I messaged a good buddy of ours and I said, dude, did you see the bear tooth coming to pops? And he's like, yeah, I'm on my way now. Like it was that night. And I was like, you've got to be freaking kidding me. That sucks. Yeah. I think it was like a weeknight too. I don't remember. It wasn't a weekend. I know it was like a weeknight. And yeah, it was a bummer, dude. I wanted to go and they haven't been back since. And I looked on their website yesterday 
they're going to be, they're going to be in Ohio in September. And then they're going to Europe, I would assume to do festivals and then nothing, nothing booked, but if they get anywhere close, I'm going. Yeah. Uh, actually, it doesn't even have to be close. I'll fucking take a road trip. It'd just be fun. <laughs> I don't care um but yeah i don't know i could like i said i could i could do something like that but yeah don't watch it please <laughs> don't watch <laughs> yeah don't do that don't do that you, do you think just, let me ask you this anyway, well so. you you so you brought this up like could you do a podcast on your own so you, here's another thing that i don't do i don't post workout videos and i do i go to the gym every day it's not like I'm fucking shredded by any means, but I go to the gym every day again, because I hate myself and I don't want to be a tub of lard, <laughs> uh, but I don't post workout videos. I never, it's never even crossed my mind. Now I don't listen. I have plenty of friends that, that do this. I have personal trainer friends that do this and they should, they're fucking in great shape. They're motivating and they should be the people that you follow and they should be the people that you listen to. And I have friends that are personal trainers that do it. And again, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything negative about you. It just has never crossed my mind once to do something like that because I would hate to know what people actually thought about me doing it. Right. Again, I would go, Oh, you hate me. You think I'm a douchebag? I know I am. I hate myself too. I am a fucking douchebag. That type of thing. You know, most people do that because the likes or the good comments that they get outweigh the bads like the bad comments sure well i i'm not even talking about social media comments i'm just talking about okay. what they take away from it you I know got you. okay uh yeah i've never done that and i i've never posted like music videos like of me just in front of a camera playing guitar and singing there's something about it that just makes my my asshole cringe I just can't do it i just can't <laughs> And again, I know plenty of people that do, and that's good. And you should. What about uh, for me. what about writing for you? Because you you know you've written for different publications and stuff. So like, uh, is that a different thing? Like, does it make you nervous or feel weird at all when you put those out? Like, because you know people are going to read that, no. or is that something you can kind of hide behind because your you know your face really isn't attached to it that much? Well, I wouldn't say I'm hiding behind it. I just think it's a different. I think it's a different thing. I think it's a different medium than social media and video and uh, performance. I don't know. That's not, it's creative, I guess. Although the type of writing I'm doing now that's published, it's not necessarily creative. I don't know. So, I mean, I mean, it, it takes like, you have to sit down and think and then do it, but, and edit yourself and like, but no, I, I, no, it's not the same thing to me. That's whatever. Okay. But also I write about, a, a, I write about sports, you know, like there are 10 million sports writers on earth. So like anything that I have to say or anything that I write, I don't know if people really give a fuck because they can just go read the next guy's shit if they don't like it. I don't know if it's that bad. Now I've complained about journalism, but I've complained about negative journalism on the show. Yeah. It's clickbaity journalism. I don't like that. That's not what I do anyway. Uh, I, you know, I try to be, I've said it, you know, I won't go down this again, but uh, informational or informative sort of lets you know, like, Hey, there's this fight coming up this weekend. You should check these guys out because this and whatever. I guess like with social media, you're kind of attached to people that you know, or people that you're close to, or more so than like writing, you know, you're just kind of putting that out there for everyone versus like so i guess the oh yeah for sure the return that you're going to get isn't from you know people that you really know or you're personal with or that are going to look at you like this idiot or yeah like that. you'd be more you'd be more worried about getting those you know getting those people judging you than people that you don't know i guess yeah i mean i it, it would i would feel differently about it if i were writing opinion stuff but i'm i'm, I'm really not yeah very, very occasionally. What was the last thing I wrote about? Was it uh, where it was like opinion based? I think it was. God damn, I can't remember. Maybe it was Kamaru. No. Oh, yeah. It was after he beat Gilbert Burns. I said he was kind of underappreciated and uh, whatever, whatever I said. I don't even remember what I said at the time. It's just the way I was feeling at the time because he had a great performance against 
Gilbert Burns. And so I was, I was inspired by it, by it. And I was just kind of gave my opinion on what I think the perception of him is, you know, right. Uh, just on, you know, podcasts and what I see written about him. And, you know, there are a lot of people talking about like he was going to lose that fight, you know, like Gilbert Burns was just better. And I disagreed with him fully before it. And then I think he proved that. So I was like, Hey, thanks for proving me. Right. I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to praise, you now. anyway. Um, well, a while ago, you mentioned Cowboy uh, in passing. So he was supposed to be fighting Diego Sanchez. And I messaged you and I said that he he bowed out of that fight and he retired now. But you said they dropped him? Yeah, he got released. And I didn't read the story about it. I just know what happened after he and his manager basically went on like a 10-minute diatribe. In a, in a, so like, if you don't know you i'm saying you and then people who are listening who give a fuck about mma if you don't know so before a card when a card's coming up they'll put media members the ufc crew so commentary team and other people in a room with the fighter and perhaps his management or something like that and they'll go over their last victory they'll go over all these things about him okay because what 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 the ufc is trying to do there what the organization is trying to do is they're trying to let the fighter know they have an informed, they have an informed perspective on his position in fighting and not a biased one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's only what I know about it because I've read about it. I don't know. I'm not in the rooms. I don't know the sole purpose of that, but you know, anyway, and plus it was his retirement fight. So they wanted to give him a good send off. Right. So they were, they were, they were anticipating doing this. So, he and his manager went into this room with all these people with like John Anik, Paul Felder. Have you seen this video? It went uh -huh. viral. You uh -huh. haven't. So John Anik, Paul Felder, Megan O'Leary, and a bunch of other people are in this room. And his manager just goes on this 10 minute lecture essentially about how Diego was mistreated. They don't talk about him fairly. Uh, the commentary on his last fight was biased for the other person. And they treat him like he's a joke and, I mean, this guy went on for 10 fucking minutes and he basically just kept saying the same thing over and over and over. He didn't really have a point to make. He was just complaining. But he, again, he was very redundant in, in what he was saying. And then finally, Paul Felder looks up at him. He goes, hey, man, I didn't sign up for your lecture class. And that was like <laughs> toward the end of it. And I think wow. at the beginning, like he kind of was like talking about. I guess Diego's last fight, Felder was one of the Felder and Anik, and I guess maybe it was Dominic Cruz, whoever it was. But Dominic Cruz wasn't in the room. So anyway, they were talking about the commentary and, and, and Paul Felder looked up at the guy and he's like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like just staring at like just into his eyes. Like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, bro. Wow. And just locked eyes with him. Um, but you could tell that Diego and this guy, they're just they're they're out of their minds. They're just. Well, I, I, I don't remember. I might have talked about it on the show before, but and this was maybe a year ago. Uh, somewhat, something like that. But I listened to an interview that Ariel did with Diego and uh, what, what's his manager? What's his manager's name? I can't remember. Uh, Mike, anyway, something, I don't remember. It was the most awkward thing I've ever heard in my life because it ends up Ariel's asking these questions that he's backing himself up with. And the man, uh, Diego's manager just goes off and yeah. just makes it so awkward, starts mouthing Ariel and then starts mouthing the rest of uh, like UFC uh, media and all this other stuff and how they don't respect Diego and this, that, and the other. And then the second half of the podcast is Diego jumping in and trying to defend his manager and how his manager is the best guy on earth and this, that, and the other. And I'm like, dude, this is gross. Why are we doing this? Yeah, they're both batshit insane. I think that's just what it comes down to. Yeah. I, I mean, just... I have respect for Diego. He's been in the game for a long time. Oh, for I mean, yeah, but he's always been, a, I've never been a fan at all. He's never, never won me over. I think he's, uh, he, he does a lot of that, like the shit that I don't like, like mocking your opponent after you beat them and eh, just not into it. He's good. I mean, he was good. He's a pioneer, you know, but yeah, I don't, I just think he's out of his mind. He's also 39 and he's been hit in the head 10 million times. Yeah. Probably more. Yeah. Um, I just don't think he has it all up there anymore. Uh, but yeah, so that happened, I guess, he, like I said, I, they said he was cut or released or whatever the case may be. He's not going to get his retirement by now. Uh, so, wow. Who, uh, 
how do you say the last name of the guy that beat Dominic Reyes last night? Prohaskas. Prohaskas? I believe. What? Where is he Prohaska. at? Prohaska. Prohaska. Where's Yuri he at Prohaska. the ranking? He was number five. He's going to he get a title five? shot. He's come out of kind of nowhere though, right? He's had two fights in the UFC. That's it? Yes. Yes. He's going to get a title shot after two fights. Dude. He knocked out Vulcan and he knocked out Dominic Reyes. I mean, you that, knocked that, out that, back-to-back that, guys who fought for the title. So, I mean, I guess technically yeah. you should be fighting for a title, right? Jeez. That elbow was a monster, though. He, he didn't right hit him with right his elbow. Him. Have you watched it in slow motion or have you seen the photo? But he hit him with his arm? Oh, it was... Really? Yep. Yep. Google the picture. He hits him with, with like, right here. So the bridge of the wrist and his hand. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Looked like an elbow, but the elbow missed, and it was this part of his hand that connected. Yeah. Dang. Um, yeah, that was brutal, man. Um, I feel bad for Dominic Reyes, dude. Um, I don't know why, but I do. We feel bad for anybody that gets knocked out like that. Like you said, I, you, like, it looked like he was dead for a minute. Eh. Yeah. I've seen the Cub Swanson lost in the first round, but, man, I, I've never had a liver kick done to me but I've seen several in the UFC and it's like just for a split second, they think they can make it through it. And then all of a sudden they just fall. Yeah. I mean, your body looks, shuts down. Yeah. Who was, was that? Uh, I know it was a Matt Brown fight, but who was it him that got the, li- that took the liver kick? Who was he fighting? I don't remember. It's not important. I was just curious, but it's possible. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he yeah he lost. So, so feel bad. So for there him. was there was a draw too. That Kudalaba is that how you say his last name? Yeah, fight. That was a how was how was that a draw? Uh well, I mean, I don't know if it was. I mean, he beat the shit out of him in the first round. So technically, I think only one judge gave him a ten eight round. He had eight takedowns in the first round. Uh, and then, I mean, the second and third rounds. I mean, I think the Jacoby outstruck him. So. Okay. The town, they'll fight again. That was a good fight. I mean, that was an entertaining fight. Um, how did you like uh, – this is, this is a good question. This is a, an important question. How did you like uh, Yuri Prohashka? How did you like Prohashka's hair? I don't, I don't know. He had the tongue pull from he, kickboxing. He, he's from the Czech Republic, Kickboxer. right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Let me ask you this. Is his hair cultural appropriation? I don't know because I don't know because of where he comes from. I don't know what the culture is there. Do you think people I know where you're, I know where you're going in Czechoslovakia this, wear their hair like that typically? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Do they not? I, I don't believe so. Okay. I don't think so. No. Well, is it worse well, than I Justin mean, Bieber rocking dreads? I mean, didn't Connor do the cornrows at one point too? He did. So is I, I'm sure Irish people don't walk normally walk around with their hair like that. No, they sure don't. They sure so, don't. So he didn't get any backlash for that, did he? I don't think so. I'm sure he did somewhere. Yeah, I'm sure there was, but probably not as bad as Justin Bieber is getting right now for his dreads. Okay, so I seen this, but where was this? Just a social media thing, or what? What did he do? Something where he had dreads? I mean, he has dreads. I mean, he's, he's wearing uh, dreads right now. Okay. Which, by the way, I want to point this out to everyone who's listening who, do, who does not know. Like, when you see someone dreadlocks, you know, and you go, oh, that person looks cool like that. I could never do it. I could never pull it off. But they, they're rocking it. When you see that, just understand that their hair is incredibly dirty. And that's how it got like that. <laughs> that's how you get dreadlocks. For yeah. those that don't know, you don't wash your hair. Um, you're your head essentially just runs out of oil. Your hair stops being oily and it dries out and then it mats up and you have dreadlocks. Like if you have like a hairy dog at home and they get mats and you got to go take them to the groomer, that's what dreadlocks are. I feel like you're they pissing stink. some people off by saying this. That's fine. I look, he, but here's my, here's my point. He is, he is wearing dreadlocks right now. And I think he should be able to without hearing anything from anyone. This has been a, a long conversation about whether dreadlocks are cultural appropriation or not. Um, if you believe in that sort of thing, I if do not. not. 
if you're trying to make a statement with it, yeah, I can understand. But if you're just doing it to do it. Well, is one better than the other or worse than the other? Don't they both kind of have their both kind uh, of have their own shortcomings there? Doesn't I mean, that I, I guess. So if you believe in cultural appropriation, which again, I do not. I think it's good to appropriate culture because that's how we become smarter as human beings. Um, if you believe in that sort of thing, that's fine. Perhaps he is, but what culture is he appropriating? We don't know because no one knows, technically speaking, when dreadlocks started and who started them. Right? Uh, okay. Vishnu, Vishnu of of ancient Hindu culture wore dreadlocks. So, and I believe he's the first reported. So I guess we're culturally appropriating Indian culture by wearing dreadlocks. The Romans wore dreadlocks. The Pharaohs wore dreadlocks. What do you want? Ancient, ancient Rome, you know, you know, I mean, so, uh, I don't know. I just think people need to get over it for those that, I mean, I, I, I understand why I, I know who people think he's appropriating. I get that. But if you think that's who he's appropriating, you're not wrong because of who he is and the music, the kind of music that he does and the lifestyle he lives and the way he dresses and the way he talks and the way he acts. I get it. Has he come out and made a statement about this? Um, like I don't believe his, so. His I don't think so. Is? I don't think so, but just to understand that if you're talking solely about his dreadlocks and none of those things I just said, you're wrong. <laughs> just gotta let you know you're wrong. You're wrong. Um, no, it all started because someone said something on social media. And of course, all of the news, real news or real news organizations, USA Today, um, New York Times, there was another one. They all did a story on it based off of joe schmo's social media post about it and then they put negative headlines of course outrageous of course insulting whatever they use whatever words they use to get clicks um i don't know man i think if you care that justin bieber has dreads you he's been in the he's been in the news a lot here lately right didn't he do um he like played at a prison and they were talking about the what? song choices. He, yeah, he played at a prison. They were talking about the song choices that he used because it was like real. It was like dark. Are there good ones to use at a prison if you're just? I don't. Bieber? I don't remember. Go, Google this. All right, here I found it. Here we go. Are you ready for this? You're gonna love this. I hope so. So this is Justin Bieber in a prison singing his song "Lonely." Don't know the song, but okay. <laughs> this is TMZ. Of course. Probably not the best choice for, uh, I don't know, thousands of inmates who are lonely. I know, right? So I, w I want you to look this up after the show because... I want you to see like how he's dressed and everything. He's in like it looks like sweatpants. And, Who thought that uh, that was a good idea? Like a Carhartt jacket and maybe some New Balance shoes. I probably like his jacket, but yeah, go on. I can't see you wearing like a Carhartt jacket. Oh, I it I already know. I I bet you I know what it is too. Yeah, I would rock that. Okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> who thought that that was a good idea? I don't know. Well, but why? But okay, so why? Why? Why a prison? Why Justin Bieber? Why that song? I do appreciate that he was actually singing. I, I don't have the answers you're looking for. He's he's a good singer, man. He that is. Kid, he, he's a talented dude. He, is. he gets he's he gets so much shit. Mm -hmm. But you gotta understand, he's been famous since he was eight years old. And I, how, I how are you? Say, how are you going to be normal? I would say yeah. he's kind. I mean, he's had some weird stuff here and there, but he's kind of navigated the waters pretty well for being famous from that compared young. to some other people. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, he's done he's done some incredibly douchey things that he knew were going to be media sort of 
in the media and, and, <clears throat> and publicized. But again, how do you expect him not to? He's been famous since he was a little kid. What do you expect? Let me, uh, let me, re, let me retract a statement. I just, I'm a previous statement of mine, not retract, just correct. Okay. Um, I don't believe in cultural appropriation. I believe in cultural appreciation. And I think the two get confused way too often. Okay. There. Had to correct myself there. <laughs> um, so anyway, if you believe he's appropriating culture with his dreads, okay. If you can name which one, actually, no, don't name which one because you can't. But also, I think you're probably worried about the wrong thing when it comes to Justin Bieber appropriating anything. Let's just, and I'll just leave it. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a weird one, man. Like your hair, somebody's hair bothers you. Yeah. And there's a whole thing too. Like Katy Perry dressed up as a geisha. People were upset about that, but it's typically the people not of that culture that get upset about it. That's what bothers me about it. Yeah. You know, who's upset that Justin Bieber has fucking dreads, stupid white people. <laughs> if it bothers you that much, grow some fucking dreads. You pussy. You de- that's what it is. It's just deep down sort of like just an overall, not jealousy, but just like resentment at people who actually just have the, I don't give a fuck in them. That's the most of the people who are complaining about these things. They don't have that. I don't give a fuck. Right. They're scared. Just do it. You want dreads, grow dreads. No one's <laughs> going to stop you. Just do it. You're going to stink, but <laughs> you're going to stink. <laughs> I feel like, because the mullet has come back recently. I feel like that's got to be culturally help, I have a mullet. someone. I have a mullet right now. Do you? Yeah. Um, I don't know who. What, you don't know who was? Um, but I'm going to, I don't know who you're culture, cultural appropriating. Culturally appropriating with a mullet? Uh huh. Uh-huh. I You have to be, it has White to be trash. <laughs> But I think most times it's just white trash. Just a bunch of a bunch of hillbillies that are going to come after trash. you. A bunch of hillbillies going to come after you. Yeah, I don't think they care. They can't spell appropriation. Um, and they can't. They're not going to be able to run after you. Who have you seen with a mullet lately? Like no, a, I, I think, a mullet, well, mullet. It's just it's a the fad that's coming back around. Like a lot of high school kids are doing it. Really? Because it's the cool thing to do. Do you hang out with high school kids, or how do you know this? I don't hang out with high school kids. Do you have like a cousin that has a mullet that's in high school? Or how, I just want to uh, know how I, you know that it's actually, well, yes, I have a nep- two nephews actually. Both have mullets? Uh huh. In high school? Well, one's in middle school. Is now, now hold on. <laughs> is, this, is this just a neglect thing? Like I haven't had a haircut in a long time. No, this, this is happened. legit mullet. Like he, this is like I want went, to. He went. He went to the groom or the, almost the groomer. He went. <laughs> it's a human he, groomer. He went to get right. a haircut and said, "I want a mullet." Now, what type of mullet did they give him, and how long was his hair before he did this? So, I mean, does he have? Okay, like you know a, way too much about mullets. This is. I mean, I've had mullet. a mullet in my life, several different points in my life. I mean, I have one right now. You can't tell because of. Yeah, but, well, I'm, excited, I'm excited for you because you're joining a fad that middle schoolers are doing. That's awesome. Well, listen, now you just hold on there, guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> did he have like long enough hair to get like a Billy Ray Cyrus mullet or is it like an emo mullet? Now there's two different things. I didn't know or, emo, emo mullet. Oh, yeah. What the hell? Oh, yeah. I thought or, emo was like dark jet black. I thought true. emo w- was more of like jet black the swoop over the face whatever you call that thing which i I know you've been through that stage too i think you're the person to ask (laughs) um i don't i don't remember what i was saying thank you you're welcome oh emo mullets yeah there's the emo mullet and then there's like the the funny guy mullet as i call it Okay. So there's like the intentional, I want to look white trash mullet. There's the emo mullet. So we'll call it a fashion mullet. And then there's the funny mullet. It's for the guys who want to be funny, but they didn't go full white trash and they didn't have the hair to be emo in the first place. So they went kind of in the middle. 
So okay. which one of those? Does how do you, how do you? What's the difference between them? Like how, what the difference in the mullet? Like the physical mullet? What's the difference in them? Like how long it is in the back? It has something to do with it. Yeah. Okay. So they, we've spent way too much time talking about mullets. Um, so like the Billy Ray Cyrus mullet is fully committed to on the top with a fucking dangly, dangly, dangly in the back. Okay. Right. Uh-huh. You shake your head. You can, you see it in the back, but nothing in the front moving. Right. The emo okay. mullet is really, you just have long hair everywhere or longer hair everywhere, but the back is longer than the front. So it's been cut into a fashion mullet. And then there's the funny guy mullet, which is, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do and I was trying to be funny. And then I was almost talked out of it, but I did it anyway. That type of, that type of thing. Um, and then there's the, I guess they're all a certain level of, I don't give a fuck, but maybe not. So which one of those does your cousin have? And then we can move on from mullets. I don't think he's doing the funny one. I think, I think it's a, it's a serious deal, but I don't think maybe his hair wasn't quite long enough in the back yet. So he's got, he's still got some, he's still got some growing to do. Okay. So he doesn't have hockey hair. No. Do you remember the 90s hockey player that had the mullet? Uh Uh-huh. I mean, that's what we called it. Yeah, I mean, that's what we called it sort of back in the day was was hockey hair. It was just hockey hair because every hockey player had the little fluff fluff and then the long, like Yarmir Yager and fucking, (laughs) oh, my God. Um, You're mentioning hockey. And so for some reason, like Letter Kenny just clicked in my head. Did you uh have you seen the new Mighty Ducks series? No. You have any desire to watch the new Mighty Ducks series? No, but I do have a beef with it. Okay. Here's my beef with it. How many fucking times can Gordon Bombay be down on his luck and be a piece of shit before we go, okay, we don't like this guy anymore. He's an asshole. I'm not gonna bring my kids around him anymore. He's a fuck up. Like, how many times can he be that guy? Uh, as many times as in, they want to make in, movies. in order to know this, you have to know the history of the mighty duck. So here's the hit. Let me give you the history of Gordon Bombay. So in the first movie, he's the successful attorney in Minneapolis, right? Mm-hmm. He's on top of the world. Can't be beat in the courtroom, right? Stud, right? Uh huh. Hasn't played hockey since he was a little kid. Mm-hmm. Just want to point that out also, right? Hasn't played, doesn't practice, doesn't play on his own. Um, something happens at his firm. He doesn't like it. He gets hammered, drives behind the wheel, gets arrested, gets whatever. So he has to do community service. He has to coach this terrible, terrible hockey team, right? Mm -hmm. Now, he makes it very clear in the first movie, I hate hockey and I hate kids, which is what led me to believe he hasn't played hockey since he was a little kid. And oh, by the way, when he was a peewee and peewees as a kid, he was the best player in the league. (laughs) He was also three foot six and everyone else was five ten. I don't know how he was the best player, but somehow he was really good. Everyone else had facial hair. They looked like you. And he was this little person. I don't know what it was. <laughs> so anyway, um, and it ends up coaching the team, inspires the kids. He gets motivated, right? So after the first movie, they went, they, they, they beat the, they beat the big, the good team. They beat the big team. They have a hero. And then it's, it's his time. It's his time. It's your time, coach. It's your time to go be a hockey player, right? So this motherfucker, <laughs> stop me if, you, if, if I'm wrong here because this is the way that I saw well, so, it. So far, you've got the timeline down pat. <laughs> so this motherfucker is going to go play minor league hockey, try to get into the NHL. He's one step away from being in the NHL after not playing since he was eight years old. All because he coached a peewee team to a championship. Yeah, but didn't he have friends like that were that were hockey in, in the NHL and like they made the the arrangements for him? Who was in the first movie? Chris Chelios, Luke Robitaille, and someone else. Basil McRae, maybe. Anyway. Okay, so now we got to move on to the the second movie. Hey, so it's your time, coach. So the movie's done. All right, great. D2 comes out the beginning of the movie. He's one step away from being an NHL player, right? Mm -hmm. 
I want to remind everyone that's listening. He has not played a lick of hockey since he was eight years old. Okay. All of a sudden he's, by the way, now he's an adult. We got to, we got to, we got to mention here that Gordon Bombay is now an adult who's five, four and playing <laughs> amongst giants and minor league hockey. Okay. He's five, four, and he's one step away from making the NHL gets injured. Now he has to go back to Minnesota where he's going to be a lawyer again. Right. Because you can just do that. Oh, no, 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 no. He's going to work with some old guy in a skate shop and he's going to sharpen skates like a loser. (laughs) Why did he make that choice? Why didn't he just go back and be an attorney and get his life together? So what they're trying to lead you to believe is, is this was his only option. He gets injured. He can't go to the pros. Now hockey's out of the question. So now he has to go back and he has to work at this little, this little pro shop, this little fucking hockey shop back in Minnesota with, with Hans. Hans, the old guy who teaches them to fly. So he's down on his luck. They lead you, lead you to believe that this is it for him. This is going to be what his life is. And then, oh, by the way, some sponsor dude walks in and says, we want you to coach Team USA. You're thinking like, what a great opportunity. That's badass for him. Wonder who he's going to coach. Oh, no, no, we want that shitty peewee team that won a lucky game that you coached right before you went off and tried to join. That's who we want to represent Team USA. We want that terrible team. Okay, good opportunity. So let me go round up the team. They win the gold. They beat Iceland. Fine. Third movie. Let me ask you something. Do you know what he did in the third movie? No. Is it made clear to anyone what he was doing with his life in the third movie? I don't remember. I haven't seen the third one in a really long time. That's a really bad movie. But they're all in their own right bad. The first one's not bad because that is a good kids movie. I mean, they're all like the, the, good... the, the feel good, like the kids that weren't very good at what they do win somehow like, uh, what's it, Little Giants? Remember the movie Little Giants? I do. Completely different to me than Mighty Ducks. But yeah. I mean, well, the storyline for like the coaches was different. But it's yeah, but also like nervous. the coach, like his relationship with Charlie Conway, there was like a deeper level of human emotion there. Like he really had to not be a piece of shit <laughs> in order for Charlie Conway to succeed. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. But here I have so many beefs with the Mighty Ducks trilogy. OK, but here's my other beef. So in the first movie, Charlie's supposed to be this hero, right? He's he's now the best player on the Mighty Ducks. But then the second movie rolls around and he's the worst hockey player on the ice. So bad that he gives up his spot on the team to Keenan Thompson. (laughs) Whose only specialty is a roller hockey knuckle puck (laughs) that somehow translates on the ice against guys who are six foot five. And he is, oh, by the way, four foot six. Dude, there's just no my. You know my this favorite is a giant part? letdown, man. No, you know what my favorite part of the though is, and I think Little Giants had one too. But it's like the uh, the just random kid that the coach sees, who like in an alleyway, you see him throw a a you know a ball and hit something really hard, and it's like, oh, we need him. Oh, but he can't skate. You know, I, you know what I'm saying? Like it's a, I don't. I, that's just that's funny to me. I don't know how to skate. <sighs> Um, so the third movie, here's my theory. It's never really made clear. Now he ends up, they get kicked out. They're trying to get him kicked out of the school because they were given this scholarship to play at this like prep school where hockey rules all not to play varsity, just to be the freshman team. Why would you make a movie about that? That is so, (laughs) that is so boring. It's so uneventful. Oh, because they're going to play the varsity in the end. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's why. So, but let me go back to Charlie Conway before I finish up with Gordon Bombay. So in the second movie, Charlie Conway is so bad that he gives up his spot to Keenan Thompson. And then in the third movie, we, we catch up with them. Now they all have kind of have facial hair. They have deep voices. And Charlie Conway is, he's destined to have a hockey career, I guess is the way to put it. And he's the best player on the ice now. Okay, what happened between the second and third movie? That I guess he practiced. Fine. Possible? Sure. So then in the third movie, 
Gordon Bombay shows up and is representing them as their, he's their attorney in this legal matter to not get them kicked out of school. But it's never really stated as to what he does in that movie. So my theory is leading up to this, this series on whatever channel it's on, he was a piece of shit in the third movie. And he's still a piece of shit in this fucking TV show. And you shouldn't let your kids around him. That's my point. <laughs> it was a long road to get to that point. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Finally. There's just so many holes in the Mighty Ducks story. It just bothered me. Yeah. So now uh, he basically just runs this old uh, ice rink. Again, you were a lawyer. Why are you doing these things? You have an education. You're an educated person. So yeah, so, Not only so, were you a lawyer, but you were the top lawyer in your city. Why, why are you such a fucking piece of shit? So yeah, so now, now he runs an ice rink, but he wants nothing to do with hockey. Of course and not. Then, and then it's this woman who uh, her kid wasn't a good enough to make or to, to stay on the, the big team around the area. So now he has to grab a bunch of other kids that are terrible and don't know how to play hockey. And she's going to be the coach. And then it's like her trying to get Bombay to help coach. And he doesn't want anything to do with it. And yeah, that's the storyline. Uh, that story never, that, that story will never get old. It'll just keep, it'll keep being remade. <laughs> I know. How many of those that... <laughs> What was the little giant? So you said, so there was Fulton Reed and Mighty Ducks. He's in the alley. He's shooting pucks. He's got a wicked slap shot. And then in Little Giants, was it? I think it wasn't it the kid uh, that actually played the lead role in Final Destination. Maybe? Yeah, Devin Sawa. Yeah. And I know that because I follow him on Twitter because he has a really interesting story about getting sober. Um, oh, he really? Was like, he was like out of control back wow. in the day. Um, but so, yeah, that kid. Uh what was he throwing toilet paper in the grocery store? So that translates into yeah, being I think that, I the think best PB quarterback that. in Ohio. <laughs> what's yeah. another kid? What's one of the other kids movies? So there's one about foot. Little Giants is the one about football. Mighty Ducks is uh -huh. hockey. Is there a baseball one? I'm trying to think. There's hardball, but that's way too deep of a story to even make fun of. I won't even do it. I mean, you know what hardball is? Yeah. What's that kids? What's the little the real little kid's name something g or gg or something like that is that hardball yeah it is it it's keanu reeves right yeah g isn't it g money g is it, is it I uh, yeah i know what you're talking about okay he gets shot and killed yeah that's pretty sad <laughs> uh, i mean I, I guess sandlot kind of right can i tell you something can i can i give you a controversial statement right now you don't like sandlot garbage <laughs> garbage hate it have always hated you, it you may you may get death threats on this episode i've always you know, hated right? it well here's the thing at the time when sandlot came out i was a little league baseball player and i just thought every one of those kids looked like shit playing baseball and it pissed me off i was like why didn't you just come get me and my friends i know we're not actors but we at least would have looked like we can play baseball pissed me off um oh i was gonna give you a fun of trivia you know who was in the first mighty ducks who Who's not, I mean, he's not relevant anymore, but he was a couple years ago. Jesse Smollett. Really? He was one of the Hall brothers. So there was Jesse and Terry Hall. He was Terry. Really? You know, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, I remember I, how Jesse Hall was in the I'm second one, but all of a sudden his brother doesn't exist anymore. That's Jesse Smollett, the one oh, that wow. doesn't exist anymore. Huh. And that's another, like, what happened to your brother, bro? Where'd your brother go? Why isn't your brother on team, team USA? What happened? Like, why are we, why are we allowing this to happen? Um, no, those kinds of things in movies drive me nuts though. Cause it's like, I know it's not a big thing, but it's kind of like, you can't just not talk about it. Like if, if, a, person, if, a, yeah, person, can. if a person is in one number one and not in number two, and there's no valid reason why they're not in number two. That's an issue. We need to know how you killed them off or what happened to them. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I Well, I think that way, but Hollywood doesn't. They don't give a fuck. They're just gonna... They don't. They don't. Um, can I tell you what I hate most about Sandlot? Sandlot could have been really cool if it were actually about the team and about them achieving something as a baseball team, but it was, it, it was not that. 
It's about that stupid baseball and that dumb computer animated dog. I, and Benny the Jet. Oh, oh, Jesus oh Christ. God. So we're going to end the movie. Little fuck face who moved to the neighborhood. who was the biggest dork. He's a baseball announcer now. That's his job. Didn't become a baseball player. But Benny the Jet did. And you're thinking like, Benny the Jet must be, he must be Hall of Fame bound, right? He must be the best player. No, no, no. He's not. He's going to pinch run and steal home to end the movie. Fuck off. No home run. No inside the park home run, no triple, like nothing. He's going to pinch run. People say he's lost a step or two. But I think we might see some fireworks. I think that's the line. What a lame way to end a movie. <laughs> this doesn't bother you? Not near as much as it bothers you. His name was Benny the Jet. That's true. And he was a pitch runner. That's that's. What's another baseball one? I'm trying to. I feel like there's another baseball one. I'm not thinking of that involve involves kids and oh, Bad News Bears. Hands uh, down, the best yeah. best kids yeah. baseball movie ever made. Which one, old one or new one? Oh, the original. I, I, you gotta I go. See, you gotta go. OG. Okay. I did. I did. I did like the newer one a little bit. A little bit. Okay. Uh, have you ever seen? Have you ever watched all of the original Bad News Bears? So there were three. I want to say. I don't know. Uh. Uh-uh. So the one, and this is kind of like, I think this might've been where Mighty Ducks gets their fucking writing ideas from. But so the first one, they win the California Little League Championship. Or no, they lose. I'm sorry, they lose. Here's the problem. So they lose. I mean, if you've seen the first Bad News Bears, you know they lose. Because Tanner throws their second place trophy at the team and then they start spraying beer on each other. The second movie, Bad News Bears, Back in Training, I believe is what it's called. They have to go to Houston to play in the Astrodome against Houston's Texas, Texas best baseball Little League team, right? Uh, now, you think, okay, cool. How do they get there? What do they do? And let, let, the, uh, let the shenanigans begin, right? But here's the problem. In the Houston newspapers, in the Houston media, they're known as the California champs. Okay. Well, back the fuck up, writers of Bad News Bears, too, because they didn't win in the first Bad News Bears. So what did we miss? And why are we not talking about it? Because they weren't the champs in the first movie. We were were paying attention. You can't just do this to us. Um, That's a really bad movie. Oh, my God. And the baseball, and it's super, super. What other, are there any other, like, feel-good sports movies like that? Uh, Like, for different sports? Like what, what? What is our basketball one? What would be a basketball one with little kids? Uh huh. I think it's supposed to be obvious, and I don't know. Let me think about it. Little kids. No, little it, kids, it, little it kids. does seem like there's an obvious one. Basketball with little kids. I don't know. Um, Only thing that's popping in my head is Space Jam. I don't know why. <sighs> basketball with little kids. Yeah, I don't know of one, dude. Maybe there's not. Maybe we need to write one. I think you just gave me a million dollar idea. There has to be. There has to be. Hold on. Hold on. Because I know there's that recently there have been like there's a new series out on whatever one of these with John Stamos is a coach and he coaches like like teenage girls. And there's that win win movie. Is it called win win with Sam Rockwell? He coaches a girls basketball team. He's like a drunk and. That story has been done. I, why, why is it, what is it with basketball and like drunks coaching basketball? That's a weird one that keeps getting redone too. basketball movies. I'm just going to Google that and see what I come up with. Nope. Not basketball wives. Don't care about that. <laughs> um, there's above the rim, but that's high school. There's teen wolf. That's high school. And that's more about a wolf and the struggles <laughs> he had to go through. Um, there's Hoosiers, but that's high school, not little kids. Hoosiers is a really good feel good story, but that's also yeah, based on a true, true story. Yeah. Ooh, just because I'm seeing, you know, what one of the worst basketball movies is, is the air up there where they tried to make us believe that Kevin Bacon could dunk a basketball, <laughs> but not like just dunk, like he barely got his hand over the rim, like tomahawk dunk, like fuck off. What about, uh, 
Remember Joanna Man? I never saw that, and I'm really upset at you for seeing it. <laughs> I don't know if I ever actually watched it. I don't either. I just remember the movie. What was uh? What was the movie? Was it The Sixth Man? I, it just came up as I was scrolling through. I've never really? seen that either, but of course that's a movie that you've seen and would remember. Uh, God, these are all like high school kids. I can't see any little kid. Maybe there aren't any little kid ones. There's Air Bud. There you go. And there's Ernest Goes to the Rim. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know Ernest? Oh, you know Slam Ernest. Dunk Ernest. Sorry. Ernest Goes to the Rim. Sounds like a bad porn. Um, <laughs> slam dunk Ernest. Sorry. <laughs> Why am I sorry? Who cares? Uh, 1990s basketball movies, Hoop Dreams, Basketball, Air Bud. Oh, Basketball. There you go. I, I forgot about that. I've, can I, I've never seen that movie. Really? Never seen it. Yep. Haven't seen it. Uh, Above the Rims, one of my favorites. White Man Can't Jump, one of my favorites. Good one. Sunset Park. That's a good one, but that's not about, I mean, those are high school kids. Celtic Pride, terrible, terrible movie where they tried to make us believe Damon Wayans could play basketball. Blue Chips, great one, but not about kid. There is not, uh, there's not, all right, basketball comedy. About love and basketball. That's a good one. That's a good one. I guess it's kind of about kids. Kind of. Oh, there is one. Rebound with Martin Lawrence, 2005. I can picture the, I can picture the cover of that, but I don't I don't think I ever watched it. Roy McCormick, Martin Lawrence, is a college basketball coach more famous for his temper than his coaching ability. After one of his rages gets him banned from the sport, Roy take, Roy takes a job coaching basketball at a middle school and attempt to repair his reputation. Amazingly, what Roy began as a show of rehabilitation begins to genuinely change him, and he learns to care for his team. His relationship with local mom Jeannie is a is a good influence as well. So there you go. They already did it with Martin Lawrence. Hmm. There's uh there's Joanna man, your favorite. I guess that's the only one I could redo rebound and make it better. There's thunderstruck with Kevin Durant from 2012. Don't know what the fuck that is. The heck? Um, they're calling 17 again with Zach Efron, a basketball movie. Does he play basketball in that? I don't know. I've never seen it. Do you, do you remember the episode of It's Always Sunny when they coach the youth basketball league? Yes. And the, they put, uh, then he put like safety pins and like rubber bands <laughs> on their wrists or something. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that, one, that one kid's wearing flip flops the whole time. Oh, oh. yeah. yeah. <laughs> that episode is so funny. Oh, God. Yeah. It doesn't look like there is. So. I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it a. Referee. Oh, here's another terrible one. Terrible one. You ever seen the movie O? No. It's supposed to be the story of Othello, one. like the Shakespearean story, Othello. Okay. But it takes place in. So it's from 2001. So it takes. It's modern times in 2001 at a high school, and they're playing basketball. It's Josh Hartnett and Mackay Pfeiffer. Mackay Pfeiffer's name is O in the movie. He's this black kid at a privileged, pretty much white preparatory school, but it's really known for basketball. So it's his ticket to superstardom in the NBA. Uh, and he gets, you know, he gets sabotaged and in, in, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not sabotaged. Betrayed. Betrayed. He gets betrayed by Josh Hardnett, who's supposed to be like his best friend. Okay. Ends up killing himself. The story of Othello is a pretty, pretty rough story. But so anyway, but the basketball in it, like they tried to make us believe that Josh Hartnett was a basketball player and he was getting recruited by Duke, but he does steroids, shooting steroids in the ass, but he still looks like skinny Josh Hartnett from 2001. <laughs> it's like, what is this? Anyway, I don't know. I, I think I think about these things too much, clearly. Anyway, it's a bad movie. I mean, it's, it's a heavy movie. He doesn't like it. Um, how did we get here? I have no idea. I don't know. Are you ready to uh, go down a little bit of a darker rabbit hole here before we get out of the show? Let's get dark. So the title of this is going to be 12 Disturbing Songs That People Love. So I can either give you the band 
and have you tell me what you think the song would be. That That's probably going to be a bad. Just based off of that title. Or I can give you what the premise of the song is and see if you can fi- fi- figure out who the band is and what the song is. Let's go premise. Premise of the song. Okay. So I'm we're not the start. best with song titles. Okay. So. So the very first one is the premise of the song is uh, talks about survived abortion and the Columbine shooting. So a band that talks about, so this is in the same song. They talk about could be surviving, a band, could be artist, but in the same right. song, they talk about abortion and Columbine uh-huh. about surviving abortion and Columbine shooting. And this is all in one song. Yes. I'll give you a hint on this one. It's somebody we have named a, sh- a show title off of in the past. Mm. Eminem. No, but Marilyn Manson. Marilyn Manson. Yes. Yeah, What's yeah, the song? Okay. What's the song? Uh, that's a good. I have no idea. Disposable Teens. Okay. Well, he got blamed for Columbine, so that's why that. Was, I don't know why I said Eminem first. Yeah, that right. makes sense. So, uh, number two, man trapped in a hospital who lost his arms, legs, ears, nose, tongue, and jaw. Someone wrote a song about this? Uh-huh. Um, Huge band. Radiohead. No. It has to be, is it a pretentious band? Or are they, like, fun? Uh, this doesn't sound like a fun concept, but. I mean, they're, a lot of people would say they're, like, at the forefront of, I wouldn't say forefront. Forefront of I don't know because that's pretentious. No, um, no, just a, a huge rock band. One of the huge rock band. Yeah. Foo Fighters. No. Semi, I guess rock metal. Avenged Sevenfold. Bigger. I get one more guess. Uh okay. bigger than Avenged Sevenfold. Maybe five, the big one of the biggest. Five finger death punch. No, bigger. I don't, I don't fucking know, man. Metallica. Oh, what song? One. That's what that's about? Apparently. I Okay. Darkness imprisoning me. All that I see. I'm gonna, I, I, sure, I guess. Fine. <laughs> I, that, whatever. I can't believe in anything. Can't tell if this is true or a dream. Deep down inside I feel. I, I, yeah, okay. I'll give them that. Fine. I think they said that <laughs> after the fact, but okay. Go ahead. Well, this one's going to be, be kind of hard. I might just have to give this one to you because it, it's just d- domestic violence and suicide is what it's talking about. But so many songs about that. Um, it's give a me band, it's a band that you said in the past. What was the what was the topic we were talking about? Because uh, you said I think you said this could be the song of our generation or something. System like of that. a Down. Uh huh. Chop Suey. Song? Chop Suey. That's what Chop Suey's about. This is all coming from Loudwire or Loudwire. <laughs> wake up. Wake up. What are the fucking lyrics to that song? I don't believe these cocksuckers. Hold on. I don't, I don't think uh what did you say it's about? Domestic violence and suicide. Okay. Chop suey lyrics meaning. And you said Loudwire is the publication who posted this? Uh-huh, yeah. So this is Song Facts. There's a lot going on in the song, but it touches, a drug, it touches on drug addiction, but doesn't have the somber tone. The song can also be interpreted to be about how society views death or about Christ. Doesn't say anything about what you're saying here. Well. What are the lyrics? Hold on. Chop suey lyrics. So you said, what is it? Suicide and wake up, grab a brush, put a little makeup, hide the scars and fade away the shakeup. Why'd you leave the keys upon the table? Here you go, create another fable. I don't think you trust in my self-righteous suicide. Oh, he does say that. Uh, I'm an idiot. I cry when angels deserve to die. I feel like that is so open open for interpretation, but okay, go on. What's the next one? (laughs) I like how you're fighting back on all these and then being proved wrong. <laughs> I'm just, I'm giving up. 
Uh, the, well, this one might be pretty easy. Uh, suicide through hanging and self mutilation. Su huge, the bit huge song for this band. Jumping off point for this band. So their jumping off point was about suicide and self mutilation. Yes, absolutely. I, I have no idea. Maybe some suffocation. Huh? Maybe some suffocation in there. No breathing. Lincoln Park? No. Wait, suffocation? Oh, Papa Roach. <laughs> Last resort. What is that supposed to be about? Suicide through hanging and self-mutilation. Okay. Are you going to fight back on that one too? No. Okay, how about a woman raped after meeting a stranger and then getting raped in prison? I don't this know. One's, this one's really easy to think about it. Tool? Even the, even the title of the song. What? Even the title of the song. Is there a song called Woman Raped in Prison? Because I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. No. Okay, so it, what it is, it's a woman who is raped after meeting a stranger, and then that stranger gets raped in prison. Oh, I thought you meant the woman got raped in prison. No, I was going to ask, bet. why is she in prison? But, I, I said um, that. I don't know. I don't know. Sublime. What? What song? Date rape. Date rape. I don't, okay, sure. Really? Yeah, no? sure. Nothing? I don't even know what that song sounds like. Okay. Does it, is that a song. popular song for them? I think it was their, was it their biggest song? No, it's not bigger than Santeria. There's no way. Oh, yeah, true. Uh, what so I got... Yeah, this one didn't have a premise, but it was Rape Me by Nirvana. Uh, how about 15-year-old who shot himself in English class? Jeremy. Yes. That's, That's an easy jam. one. Yeah. Uh, here we've got details, the experience of a rape victim and the rapist's own point of view. You named the band a while ago. Did I? Tool? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. What's the song? I have no idea. Prison Sex. Okay. Uh, how about... I think all of these bands lie and say this after the fact. I don't... Anyway, go ahead. Keep think... going. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if this premise thing is going to work. So it's kind of hard. So this one deals with shattered youth, drugs, and suicide. Um, and you're not good with the names of bands. Or I mean, the names of songs. No. Well, who think, do you know The Kids Aren't All Right? Who sings that? The offspring. Okay. Right there. This one, I don't know if the song is about real life cannibal, a men or Armin Muse, and then a guy I can't pronounce his name who volunteered to be eaten by Muse. And someone wrote a song about this. Apparently. Ramstein did a Ramstein. Oh, that? that okay. That makes total sense. Dude, I I'd never seen a music video of them before. Or not a music video, but like a, a live video. They're pretty freaking crazy. Yeah, it's a good show. It's a fun show. Have you seen them live before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it was at an outdoor festival, so it wasn't as crazy. Gotcha. Well, it was crazy, but it wasn't like as it wasn't there. You know, it could have been the production. The production level wasn't there, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Gotcha. Um, it was there, but it wasn't there as like it could have been. Um so what you're saying is, is I need to write a song about suicide. May as well. I mean, or prison. Seems to be hits. Or rape. Or all of the three combined. And uh -huh. that's what I've been missing this entire time? I think so, yeah. I'll think about I that. You would, I would figure you would have gotten all that through your emo phase, but I guess not. But see, none of the people you just named are emo. That's true. I was just talking about like what... I don't know what, I don't know what emo... Like if you had to describe emo, what to describe emo, what would you say? The music or the look, the the lifestyle, just everything. Yeah, the lifestyle. If you had to describe the lifestyle of emo, what is it? I don't know. It's not rebellion. It's definitely not rebellion. It's more I, like, I don't know. like being a loner and. Is it that? I don't know. Isn't it? It's like dark okay. thoughts, right? Mm. Has to be thrown in there. That's goth. Oh, those aren't the same thing. No. Got an emo? Nah. <laughs> nah. But I am going to, I'm going to use this list as motivation for my next song here. Okay.
Do you know who sings Falling Away From Me? Which is about depression and suicidal thoughts. Corn. Yes. And the song Closer, which is about disturbing sound and graphic depictions of sex. Nine Inch Nails. Yes. I didn't know Date Rape. I don't even know what that song sounds like. I can't even think of it. But I wasn't. Uh, oh, yes, you do. But I'm not the biggest Sublime fan either. Hang on. Here we go. Uh, You're going to play Date Rape for me? I am. Just a few uh. seconds of it. Well, here's the thing. Here, Before you do that, are songs like that popular anymore? Mm. Like, I would love to know an artist over the last, I don't know, five years who's written a song of any genre. Well, not metal, because it is it's common in metal and hard rock, but of any other genre where the subject matter is that heavy. I'd love to know, because I honestly don't. I also don't give a fuck about lyrics. I don't know that you can get away with it anymore. So you're saying I shouldn't do it. I mean, you could try. I'm going to do it. Oh, okay. This song, that song bothers me. <laughs> I don't like Gee, that. I wonder why. I don't like that. What, what, do you, what don't you like about it? I just... The, song, the sound I, of it? Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. That might as well be a cake song. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't know what else I really, to say I, to you. it really disturbs me that you don't like cake. I like I, cake. I don't know what else to say to you. Like going the distance. That's a good song. Never there. Uh, what's the, the long straight jacket? Is that the name of sure. the song? Man. Long jacket. <laughs> <laughs> I hate. That. 